you have lost your job, lost your direction, how do you get to a place where you can put yourself back together again and maybe be better than before? We're going to discuss that on today's Job Chat. Our guest today is Sherry Simmons. I'm Hector Silva. And co-host is Don Apple. Hector, I know I don't like where, where I am now, but I don't really know how to get to where I want to be. So we're going to find out how to do that today. And Sherry's going to tell us. Why don't you tell us something about Sherry? Well, Sherry is uh, one that divides, uh, defines herself as a spot mover. She helps people figure out what spot they're in, what spot they really want to be in, why they're, they're not in that spot, and then how to move to that new spot. So having worked in the field of betterment for 16 years, Sherry's willing to poke bears, laugh loudly, walk into the dark, and be frank with a twist of compassion. Uh, compassion. Whether she's working as a life coach, trainer, consultant, or curriculum de uh, developer, clients describe the results as powerful, fun, and effective. Sherry, welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Good. Sherry, being out of a job takes a toll on you. So how do you go about rebuilding yourself? Um, you know, I think it's really interesting because a lot of people, that would be a, a, a weird concept because the way I believe in rebuilding yourself is very different than just like continue being who you were. So many people go back out and they look for the same job they just left. And, and I think oh my gosh, you are at a prime opportunity in your life. You have never in your life known as much as you know right this minute. Mm -hmm. You have never had as much as experience as you have had in this moment. And this is like the moment you've been given an opportunity to decide, to really decide who you are, not just who you've been, but who you want to be. You know, uh, one of my friends makes the joke that I, I will just go, you know what, I think the next job I want to have, and we actually call them past lives, I have many past lives, because I just like change who I am, who I'm going to be this time when I grow up. Um, and I'll just say, you know, I th I'm going to be a professional speaker. And she's like, and the next day you're not just a professional speaker, you won the award kind of thing. But it's because I decide. And the way I decide is based on who I currently am, the experiences I've had, and what pieces of that did I like? What pieces didn't I like? Why, why would I put myself back into a situation that made me miserable? So I'm very clear about understanding what makes me happy and what makes me unhappy, what serves me and nurtures my skills and talents, what allows me to use my strengths. And uh, and those strengths change, I believe. I mean, I think we have some inheritance, inherent strengths, but I think at different times in our lives, because as we grow into different phases or we go through different experiences, things climb to the forefront that maybe were a little bit more backseated previously. Uh, but who do I want to be now? Who do I want to be? And I read a really interesting article recently, and I don't know the name of this goddess from India because it's really long and lots of syllables. Most of those names are, yes. yes. So I thought it would be better just to vaguely reference versus butcher, you know. Okay. <laughs> but she is the goddess, I believe, of um, broken. They described her that she's like a goddess of being broken. And um, the concept is that she's the goddess when things just break all apart into little pieces. It's about picking up which pieces you want and making them into a mosaic of who you want to be now so that you choose the pieces and put them back together the way you want. And what I love is she rides on the back of an alligator or cro a crocodile. And we think that's a pretty fearsome thing, a mm -hmm. crocodile you wouldn't want to, but she gets on the fear and rides it anyway. Oh, crocodile representing the fear. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I think this is a point where people are like, oh, we're so comfortable with the known. Mm -hmm. and. I, there's that saying, it's easier to wrestle a devil you know than a devil you don't know kind of thing. <laughs> that will set ourselves up to go back into a situation that we don't like just because we know it. You know? I think a lot of people do that. They do. But it, when you're putting yourself back together, you're putting this new mosaic back together. Right. You're still you, though. Uh, well, yeah, the, that is you. Yeah, it, it's just the different parts of you that you like as opposed to the other. So you're not changing who you are. No. 
you're, you're still going to be the same person, but you're going, you have made a decision as to who this new person or this person is going to be reflecting out to the world. Well, maybe you're actually going to honor who you are for the first time in your life. Maybe you're going to actually claim who you are for the first time in your life. Um, I think many of us, we, again, you know, you always hear me talk about belief systems and the way we were raised and the beliefs we were given and all of that. But many of us were raised to uh, live someone else's dreams. And, you know, it's, it's the natural thing of a parent to do. We want our children to go after their hopes and dreams. Unfortunately, the hopes and dreams we know best are our own. So we see a little glimpse that, that you know, Johnny's good at math and we're an accountant. And so we reinforce that over and over. And really, Johnny hates math, but, you know, he's good at it. But he doesn't, doesn't bring him that fire mm -hmm. at all. Actually, Johnny loves art. But he's told that art doesn't pay the bills. And so that becomes associated as a bad negative thing, mm -hmm. right? And so Johnny becomes an accountant. And that's somebody else's dream. And I'm not saying don't ever be an accountant again. But you know, I am, uh, one of my past lives, I worked for a trucking company. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You're in Venus. I, 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 it was a I'm great in, job. I'm impressed. Thank you so much. And I'm really proud of that job. I was the first non-driver as well as first female ever hired to work with the new drivers and to do their training and go through their orientation and do all of that. And um, I met a gentleman during that time who, he was a former CPA. He'd also been a college professor. And I mean, really, obviously, well-educated, smart, smart guy. And we got to talking and I said, tell Tell me what's going on that you're becoming a truck driver. And um, he had a specific dream he wanted to do, and his dream did not involve being a CPA. It did not involve being a professor. And he had realized that the fastest, shortest route for him was he really wanted to travel and see the country. And so he sold everything he had, and he got rid of all the house insurance and car insurance and all that stuff. And he being the CPA, he figured out a plan <laughs> to take all the money from truck driving and invest it over five years and be able to retire and do what he really wanted to do. But in the meantime, he could travel and see places he might want to live and all that. He had a plan. But he wasn't ashamed to give up the pieces of him that didn't work, that weren't him. Hmm. Big key right there, big key. Yeah. But to do that, you you have to make some decisions as to goals and objectives. Where do you want to be? Because if you don't make that decision first, then how do you get there? Fabulous, yes. Um, you'll hear me talk about Dr. Stephen Covey, and I think everybody should be familiar with his work, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, although, forgive me, Dr. Covey, I don't believe he's a good read. That's his dissertation. It's really hard to get through, and most people will say they tried, you know, I tried. Um, I do recommend you can listen to him teach it, like on an audio CD or something like that. And he's a fantastic teacher and, and that kind of thing, so do that. But he talks about begin with the end in mind. Um, you know, you don't go on a trip without knowing where you're going to. And too many of us just don't decide. And look, you don't need to decide the rest of your life. I just need you to decide right now, even the next three months, what, what would bring me joy? Even the next year, what is it something that would just, I've always wanted to do that. I mean, one of the things I'll do with some of my clients is they go on a pleasure diet. And I require them that every day they're not allowed to go to bed until they've had some kind of pleasure in their life. And they must figure out what would bring them pleasure. And part of the fun is going out and trying stuff. And I'm like, I want you to go. I want you to go for a walk in the woods. And if you hate it, that's not it. <laughs> I want you to go try a new kind of food, Thai food. And if you're like, oh my gosh, that is really good. Pleasure. But you need to get to know yourself. You have no idea who you are anymore. And a really great way to do it is to think about when you were a child, what did you love to do? All right, I'm gonna throw it to you guys. When you were a kid, so I'll give you an example. You know, I, I know I can see that like panic look on your face, Don. You're all right, you're all right. And I loved making mud pies, all right? Loved, in fact, being the overachiever that I am, I didn't just make a mud pie, I made mud dinners. 
I had roast and potatoes and the mud pie. And my grandpa, he was fantastic because he'd come in from work in the fields and um, he'd sit down out on the sidewalk with me and, and he would have dinner with me. He didn't eat it, don't worry. Mm. But I loved making mud pies. So what is something you loved to do when you were a kid? When I was very young, I talked my dad into buying a tape recorder for me. Yes. And I would imitate the gentleman that sang Winchester Cathedral. And then I would play it back for my dad, which he never understood why it sounded so nasal. He goes, why? Because he wasn't familiar with the song. He goes, why are you doing that? He goes, I want it like to sound just like that guy. Awesome. So, we had a lot of fun. I wanted to be a baseball player. And I even got to the point where I got a tryout. Really? But they told me that wasn't my dream. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The All nerve right. of but them. Weird. But what I got the know? satisfaction of be getting at least that far. That's huge. How many people never try out? How many people never try out? Um, let me tell you the finish line story here in a second. But let me finish this activity first, okay? Um, when I sat down one day, because I realized I wasn't having enough joy in my life, and I did this activity with myself, and I remember the mud pies, I decided right then and there to take a pottery class. Pottery is the adult mm. version of mud pies, if you weren't sure. It is just like it. It's messy, and you're in there, and all that, and it was phenomenal. And every Saturday for two years, I went and made adult mud pies. I wasn't fantastic mm. at it, but it was a blast to do, right? So the key is, maybe you won't turn that into a job, but will you find some pleasure out of it? But it's often a secret, um, it, or it's a way to find out this secret of who you really wanted to be, right? So it tells me that for you, maybe being in the radio business or something like that was a desire even when you were young, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I think you're one of the fortunate who actually went and followed through mm -hmm. on that dream. Mm -hmm. And so my advice to you would be, how can we now is that still a dream? Is that still something that brings you pleasure? Is that, because when he told that story, did you see him light up, Hector? Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I look for is when people light up. And so your dream to be a play baseball player. The dream to be a baseball player didn't work out. But I did find out that what I liked about being a baseball player was being part of a team. Ah. So then ding. as a project manager later, I was part of a team. As a manager of project managers, I was part of a team. So I was able to get that satisfaction of winning as a team. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was a coaching moment from Hector. <laughs> that's perfect, Hector, because that's exactly what we do. Is Another layer of this is what did you love about it? What was it that got you excited? What brought you the joy? But I would even say to you at this point is like, were you a sports enthusiast? Was it baseball itself or was it just being a team? Because I would love to figure out if we could find you a way to get into this, into baseball world, you know, in some way or some capacity. And if you could see his face, mm -hmm. you would see that this beautiful little thing <laughs> began to happen on his face. <laughs> because that was like, oh, he, he almost hesitates to even dream that. But I can see that for you, that might be a little bit of a dream somewhere. And I don't know that it was well, now hold on. I want to hear him answer baseball, me. No. the sport. I have filled that part of it by being on the sidelines of the Chiefs games as a photographer every home. Ladies and sport. gentlemen, everybody out there should be clapping right now because Hector's a model citizen today. So very nice. Very, very nice. Um, and that's the key. And, you know, the story about the finish line plays in. Um, Amazing group here in Kansas City called Win for KC. They do a triathlon every year for women. And um, I got to go and be present at that triathlon, uh, not this year, but last year. And um, phenomenal, by the way. It's amazing to walk up to Smithville Lake and see 600 women standing there in pink hats, bathing caps, and their families, and their children, and their people from work, and the signs. And I was a mess before it even started. And I couldn't leave until the last woman because first they swim, then they bike, and then they run. And I stood at the last corner, the last corner of that run before they went up the little hill to the finish line. And as they would come around, I'd say, you did it. You did it. You did this. It's one hill, push it. I mean, it was just phenomenal to watch their face when you said, you did this. But right before the last woman came in, came a group of teenage girls who were volunteering. 
and um, they followed the woman and they were saying over the announcement, here she is, the last one. Da, 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 da. And the girls, as we do in our youth, we were saying some things that were a little less enlightened than I would like them to have been. And they're like, oh, embarrassing to have that set over the lots bigger. You're the last one. And they were saying all these things. And finally, I said, ladies, you know what? She at least crossed the start line. You didn't even start. And I think that's really important here because you've got to cross the start line. You've got to. You've got to decide, you know, when I was getting ready to turn 40, I just drew the line in the sand and said, that's it. If this is, we're going to say, half my life, right? I was like, if this is half my life, what am I no longer willing to carry forward? What is just no longer okay to take into the second half? And what is no longer to keep ignoring? No longer okay. And when we put the pieces back to, together, you know, we decide. People feel in control when they choose versus controlled. Choice, you know? What choices have you made that you're like, okay, I learned from it and I don't want to make that choice again. And here's people are like, I don't know, I don't know. Well, then get someone to help you figure it out. Get someone to take you through activities. Get someone to hold your feet to the fire. Get someone to help you dredge up the stuff. Get someone to help you look at what, what is, why won't you decide? Where's the fear of decision? Because sometimes the, the not making a choice is a choice, by the way. Doing nothing is a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice of fear. It's a choice of safety. It's a choice of not being wrong. It's a, you know, it's a choice. So get someone to help you decide. And yeah, you might be in pieces right now, but by God, they're beautiful pieces. And they can be put together into something that's amazing and that is unique. And you bring to the table that nobody else does. And that's the key. Who do you want to be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. and, and going back to what you said about you did it. Job seekers out there, sometimes getting the job, is that's wonderful. That's what you want. But the fact that you got the interview is a you did it. Celebrate every success. Uh, everything that you do that takes you closer to that job is a success. Yes. Yeah. Success and change is not measured in grandiose things. Um, I have had the opportunity to be with a number of people um, as they were dying. And I have to tell you what they say at those moments in their lives are very different than what we're talking about um, every day. They are not remembering these moments where they spent thousands of dollars or they got this fancy boat. They're not remembering the time that somebody threw them a huge lavish birthday party. They are remembering small moments in time where they had an interaction with one person and they felt unconditional love either being given or received. And, and they say, I wish I had taken more time for those moments. And, and, and that's the key. And I, earlier I said to Hector, there's a great saying that um, a woman unsatisfied will ask for luxuries. A woman in love will sleep on a board. And I think the key is find what you love and so many of these things that you think you need right now will be unnecessary because you won't need to, um, you know, we need the big houses and the boats and the fancy dinners and all the alcohol because we're trying to feel pleasure. And what and they're, if... They're artificial. It's artificial. And what if we just lived a passionate life that, that let us be who we really are? and do what really made us happy. Well, talking about happy moments, we are so happy we got to enjoy moments with you here today. Aww. I love you. I love turtles too, though, did you know? I'm, yes, I'm just I'm a sure. lover. I know. I know. If somebody wanted to contact you, where could they reach you? Um, probably the best way to do that is through my website, and that is www.sherry, C-H-E-R-I-E, like Sherry. I, but don't call me that because I won't oh, answer it. It's like way that. too fancy. Okay. So Sherry, C-H-E-R-I-E, okay. Simmons, uh, like Gene Simmons, but no relation but still. None. none. Okay. Yeah. So S-I-M-M-O-N-S dot com. Okay. Well, Sherry, thank you for being with us. And of course, we'll remind you that all of our job chat programs are available to you on our website, 
newlandingsjobchat.org. Just click on, uh, click on the past shows button. We thank you for listening. And until next time, may your days be full of health, happiness, and success.